Good morning, everybody. How are we doing this morning? Happy Easter! Why don't you all stand with us as we get started this morning? Here we go.
All right. Well, good morning. You can go and have a seat. Mansfield West, how are we doing on this Easter Sunday? We good? Awesome, awesome. Man, we are so excited that you are here. Today is a day of celebration. We get to, as believers, celebrate our risen Savior. That's something to celebrate, right, this morning? And we are so glad that you're here to celebrate with us. If we've never met, my name's Ryan. I'm the student pastor here at our Mansfield West campus. And we, again, I'm just so glad that you chose to celebrate your Easter with us here at Mansfield West, especially if this is your first time here at Mansfield West. Maybe you're here with family or you were invited by someone or you're just checking out a church in the area. Uh, we just want you especially to know that we are so glad that you are here. If this is your first time with us, there's gonna be a QR code that pops up on the screen uh, behind me. If you would scan that, let us know you're here. If you're looking to connect uh, your family or you're looking to connect here at Mansfield West, filling out the form that will uh, that this QR code will take you to is a great way for us to get that information from you. Uh, also, if you just wanna talk to somebody after our service, if you go out these middle doors and go to your left, our campus pastor, Stephen, will be there. Also, Barry, our group's pastor, will be out there as well. They would love to connect with you and show you how you can get Get connected here at Mansfield West. But a few things just kind of coming up in the life of our church we want you to be aware of. First, for our men in the room, we have our men's retreat coming up very, very soon on April 25th through the 27th in Glen Rose. And man, this is just an awesome time and opportunity for men from all of our campuses to come together and just have a weekend where they get to know one another, Bible study, worship, and just time to hang out and have a good time with one another. So if you're one of our men in the room and you want more information about our men's retreat, you can scan the QR code to get more information or sign up uh, for that as well. And that's going to be a great event coming up very, very soon at the end of April. And then also, we just want to lay before you, because of your generosity, something that we're able to do and just really have an impact worldwide is with our El Salvador campus and our Pin Pal program. And if you've never heard of our Pin Pal program, what that is is essentially you are able to help support families uh, at our El Salvador campus. If you didn't know, we do have a campus in El Salvador, a Rush Creek campus that we support. Gary is uh, very involved with what's going on in our uh, El Salvador campus. And the Pin Pal group program is just a way for you to be able to support families there. I think it's $35 a month. $35 a month provides uh, all sorts of things, medical, medical, food, housing, schooling, all sorts of different things for these families in El Salvador. And so if you want more information about our Pim Pal program or you're like, man, I think that's something I would love uh, to do or, or you're interested in, you can scan the QR code that's up on the screen. Or if you have more questions, come find me, find Gary after the service. We would love uh, to connect you and show you how you can partner with us. And uh, also just in advance, thank you for your generosity and how you give and how we're able to support our campus in El Salvador. Well, we have a great morning in store for us this morning in our Easter services. I'm going to pray for us and we're going to head back into worship. Again, we're so glad that you're here. Father God, this morning, God, above all else, God, we just, God, we just magnify and glorify your name this morning. God, the reason that we're here, God, the reason that we can celebrate, God, that we can have hope and joy this morning is because the grave is empty. God, that you resurrected on the third day. God, that you did not stay in the tomb, but God, that today you are alive. God, and because of that truth, we can have hope. We can have joy, God, and we can experience life and life abundantly with you. God, this morning we are incredibly thankful, God, for what you did for each and every one of us on that cross 2,000 years ago. And so, God, may everything we do this morning honor, honor and glorify your name above all else. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. 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 Why don't you all stand with us as we continue to worship. Nothing is 
paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Come on, sing that again. Jesus chapter 24, uh, verse 1 through 9, it says, On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came to the tomb, bringing the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. They went in but did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men stood by them in dazzling clothes. So the women were terrified and bowed down to the ground. Why are you looking for the living among the dead, they asked. He is not here. But he has risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, It is necessary that the Son of Man be betrayed into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and rise on the third day. And when they heard these words, they remembered. Returning from the tomb, they reported all of these things to the eleven and to all the rest. And so down here in verse uh, 46 and 47, this is after Jesus has, has um, kind of been hanging out with his friends and family uh, after he was dead, conquered death, rose again, and they're kind of shocked, <laughs> right? No? They were kind of surprised? You guys with me? All right, all right. I would be shocked, okay? Uh, so Jesus, who they just saw die, was there, okay? Um, and he's told me, he said, man, touch the, touch the scars. Look at this, it's me. Um, and then he says to them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for forgiveness of sins will be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And then it goes on to say, hey, they were kind of starting to get it <laughs> at that point. And because of what started there in that moment, we're here today, right? We've got forgiveness of sin. We've got new life. Amen? We serve a risen Savior. Yeah. <laughs> Father God, this morning, as we read your words, as we read that, we're reminded of the miracle. So it's hard, impossible really, for us to get our mind around our human mind. But God, your word tells us it's true. And by faith, we believe. And so this morning, God, we take an opportunity just to, to worship, to praise you, to stand in awe of you, who you are, and what you've done. In Jesus' name. Things that we 
like that reminded of our brokenness reminded of the fall of sin consequences of sin and not knowing knowing that as our my friend Joel just reminded me before this service the hope that we have is that because of salvation because you've conquered death for those who put their trust in you, this life, this is as bad as it gets. <laughs> it only gets better. The hope of eternity with you because of what we celebrate today, because on Easter we celebrate a miracle of you conquering death and offering life to all those who, who call out to you, offering life to all who put their trust in you. just help us to <clears throat> help us to to put aside our doubts put aside the hindrances the things that we tell ourselves that separate us from you and just allow you to love us the way that you say that you do fully completely you love us so God I pray that this morning your Holy Spirit would move work in our hearts work in our lives the truth would be evident the truth would be what penetrates our hearts today 
truth and light would be the theme as we celebrate you, God, our risen Savior. And we ask this this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey guys, good morning. Happy Easter to you. Lights. Uh, wonderful. You guys doing okay? You look good. You look real good. Anybody sporting a new, new shirt today? You're like, yeah, that's right. I know I look good. Okay. Man, I'm glad to see you guys. There are a lot of things that bother me about Easter though. Can we, can we be honest for a moment before we really begin? By the way, hey, I'm Stephen Rickles. I'm the campus pastor here. I, don't, I know there's somebody in here that we haven't met, but man, I'm just glad you guys are in the room. Um, There's a lot of things that bother me about Easter. Are there things that bother you about Easter? There's some weird things that are going on. You guys catch this with the Easter bunny and the eggs? I don't think that's how mammalian reproduction works. Are you guys? I failed a lot of science though, so if you can instruct me on that later. That freaks me out a little bit. Um, The Easter bunny, the whole thing. There are just other things that bother me. Are there things that bother you? Like just a small thing, but the, the Easter grass that goes in the baskets. Has anybody been fighting that battle today? Like the Easter grass is on you, like static cling onto something? Or did you guys get wise and you did away with that? You did the paper. You did the paper uh, Easter grass. You know what I'm talking about? Do you guys celebrate Easter? <laughs> Am I? <laughs> feel all alone here. Uh, there's a lot of things that bother me. The amount of pastel colors. If you're wearing pastel, I think you look great, but I don't really want to be wearing it right now, but I've got a little bit going on in my shirt. Uh, pastel colors, that's a thing, right? Okay. Uh, family photos, all the things. Just to, so we can get on the same page, I feel like we're, we're a little bit, I don't know, stuffy in here right now. Just for us to get on the same page this morning, on the count of three, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say one, two, three, and then I want you to yell out the thing that bothers you a little bit about Easter, okay? You guys ready for that? We're going to have some interaction. Did I hear a boo over here? <laughs> Manny, if that was you, we're going to have words later. <laughs> here we go. The thing that bothers you. One, two, three. Family photos and matching outfits in front of floral arrangements. You guys left me hanging. <laughs> I feel betrayed a little bit. Um... If somebody said the sermon, I am (laughs) going to go extra long today just to to punish you. Now, uh, for me, it it really, like, there's a lot of family gatherings. There are things that's just like, okay, this feels a little bit annoying, a little bit of a bother, a little bit of a grind, but I know I'm going to be benefiting from it later. I know it's going to be a good thing. But one of those things is the family photo and, and everybody in a matching outfit and everybody getting the color coordinated and all that kind of stuff. And I'm, I've been married going on 13 years, and so I know that it's going to happen. I just need to just go, go with it, okay? Like, I just need to go with it. It's not what I have chosen. It's not what I would do. It might annoy me, but I know it's beneficial for me in the long run. I'll look at these family photos later on and just be like, yes, that was so good. I remember how angry I was in that moment, but I'm smiling almost. Uh, So we have three kids now. We have uh, two beautiful girls and a handsome boy that takes after his dad, right? Uh, He's in the room, so I'm going to embarrass him a little bit. But here's here's what I know is around Easter time, we're going to have the conversation, okay? We're going to have the conversation where it's going to go something like, Buddy, I, I know it's not exactly what you want to do. I know it doesn't make sense to you right now fully, but it's just a little bit of pink in the shirt. Just the shirt, just put, put the shirt on. And it's just a, a small moment with the, with the camera and the family and getting everybody together. And, and you know what? If you're, a really, if you're really good, if you smile real big, we'll get you a treat afterwards, okay? You're going to be a big boy. Steph has to tell this to me over and over every year where, Stephen, we're going to get you a donut. It's going to be okay at the end. You're going to survive. But here's, here's what I know is that there are some things that go on uh, that I just, I just need to go with it. I might not fully understand it. Uh, but it's going to benefit me over the long haul. And, and if, you're, if you're new to church or if you, you came in here and you were not sure what to expect, 
uh, you're not even sure there's, you know, there's the incarnation, there's the crucifixion, there's the resurrection, there's all these things that are going on around Easter besides just the weird stuff with culture like bunnies and candy and all that kind of stuff. When you go to church, it's, there's a lot more questions. There's a lot more confusion. There's a lot of things that you're just trying to figure out what to do with. If that's you today and you came in and, and uh, somebody maybe invited you or bribed you with some brunch after this, man, I just want to say thank you to that person that invited you and thank you for being here. I know there's a lot of confusing stuff that's going on around Easter. There's a lot of things that you might not have a full grasp of yet, and I'll, I'll be honest, I don't have a full grasp of yet. But what Jesus says over and over to us is that this is for your benefit. And long after the candy's gone, and long after that, that new outfit just wears out and is at goodwill, that Jesus, Jesus wants something that is beneficial to give you life. And what he has accomplished for us and has given to us is for your benefit and for the benefit of the world. So thank you for being here. If, if this is your first time at church uh, ever or first time in a long time, man, we're glad you're in the room. Your questions are welcomed here. Uh, I would love to talk with you after the service, just out these doors to the left, me and Barry are out there. And it, it would just mean the world for us to, to have a chat afterwards. If you have any questions about the content, we're going to go through a lot. And if you've ever been to church before, there's, you're going to have questions, okay? Uh, but just brace yourself. Here we go. We're going to be in John chapter 16 today. Jesus is talking with his disciples. Uh, if you're familiar with Easter at all, typically people are hanging out at the back end of one of the Gospels, of Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, where they're talking about Jesus walking up to people and freaking them out, like Pastor Gary just said, where he's like, check out my scars. Isn't that crazy? Uh, and he's, he's just freaking people out left and right about him being risen from the dead. We're not there. Uh, we're going to be in John chapter 16, where Jesus is talking about that but really what it's going to do in the life of the disciples and in the world. So Jesus called his shot, essentially. He said, I'm going to the cross. They're not taking me. I am going because it's for your benefit. It's for your good. And it's going to be longer lasting than just for a weekend celebration. So buckle up. Here we go. John chapter 16, verse 7 is where we're going to begin. He's talking with his disciples in the upper room. This is a long passage in the Bible where Jesus is kind of giving final instructions with his guys, with his disciples. And he's letting them know that he's about to go to the cross and they should not freak out. You know why? Because they've been giving their lives over to him for the past three years. And they're about to face opposition. They're about to face confusion. And Jesus is telling them, hey guys, I'm about to go away. You've been trusting with me. You've been walking with me. I've been providing for you. I've been doing all these different things, but I'm about to go away. And here's the thing. It's for your benefit. So listen up. Let's go to this together. Here we go. John chapter 16, verse 7. He says this, nevertheless. So nevertheless, he, he's telling them that they're grieved, they're sad, they're confused, and they don't want him to go. But Jesus is saying, I'm going to go. So he says, nevertheless, I'm telling you the truth. It is for your benefit that I go away. Now, I go away has a lot packed into it, okay? I go away is, is him culminating and bringing together two, two specific things. One, that he's going to the cross. He's going to be crucified. And then he's going to go into the tomb. And then he's going to raise again the third day. So when Jesus says he's going away, it means that he's going to be brutally murdered on a cross. And Jesus says this is for your benefit. Secondly, when he rises again, he's referencing here, when I go away, he's saying, I'm, I'm not sticking around with you guys. He says, I'm going to spend a little bit of time with y'all after the resurrection, but I'm going to ascend to the Father in order to come again and bring the kingdom fully on the earth. New heavens, new earth. So Jesus says, I'm going to go away first off to the cross, and then secondly, I'm going to go back to my Father. And he says this, it's for your benefit. He says, uh, he says, it's for your benefit that I go away, because if I don't go away, the counselor will not come to you. If I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world about sin, righteousness, and judgment. About sin, because they don't believe in me. About righteousness, because I'm going to the Father, and you will no longer see me. And about judgment, because the ruler of this world has been judged. I still have many things to tell you, but you can't bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own, but he will speak whatever he hears. He will also declare to you what is to come. He will glorify me, because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything the Father has is mine. This is why I told you that he takes from what is mine and will declare it to you. 
Let's pray together and we'll start to talk through this. Father, thanks so much for your word. Thank you, God, for all the things that we are confused about but are so beneficial to us. I pray, Lord, that you would, you would speak to our hearts today. You would convict us of our sin. You would show us righteousness and you would remind us of judgment. That you would guide us and, Lord Jesus, that you would be glorified. That's why we're here, to praise you, to know you, to trust you more today than we have yesterday or the day before that. So help us, Lord. We need your help. Uh, we ask all that in your name, Jesus. Amen. So here we go. Uh, so Jesus is talking about how he's about to go away. He's going to the cross in order to pay for the sins of sinners. Okay? So he's going to the cross. He's going to pay a debt. He's going to pay for the punishment, the penalty that is on sinners. Jesus says, it's for your good. It's beneficial to you that I go and do that so that you can be cleansed of your sin, washed clean, and filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. So we're going to be talking a little bit about the Holy Spirit today because Jesus says this is for your benefit. This is for your life. That the kingdom of God would be implanted in you and start to come out of you into the world around you. That's beneficial to you and to the world around us. So Jesus says that's why it's good that he's going to go away, that he's not staying in the grave and he's not staying on earth because he's going to send the Holy Spirit. Now, a lot of us probably are really confused about the Holy Spirit. Anybody just outright say, man, the Holy Spirit, a little confusing. Again, you guys are leaving me hanging, okay? Um, we're starting a series. Actually, today's kind of like a little bit of an intro, uh, kind of a teaser, if you will, about who the Holy Spirit is. I am not going to do justice to this, okay, um, to who he is and what he does, but we're going to dive in a little bit more, probably more than any other church that I've experienced, go through a, a teaching on the Holy Spirit. Uh, there's a, a variety of reasons for that, but we're going to get into a little bit of just uh, some initial things about who the Holy Spirit is. And so if you notice in your Bibles or on the screen is that uh, Jesus talked about the counselor. He calls him the counselor of the Holy Spirit. It's the counselor. Uh, that means simply the, the Holy Spirit is the paraclete. That's the name that a lot of people uh, give to him, which is not helpful because we don't speak Greek, do we? So para means one that comes alongside and calls to you. It's like a good friend that comes alongside you and is helping you. The friend that's got your back, it's your ride or die. They are there in your corner. That's this idea of paraclete. There's a few other words. Uh, this is not an all-inclusive list, but a, a few other words that are helpful to understand this is the helper, which some people say that's like a little bit demeaning, and I think that's just because we, we've messed up that word. He's your help in a present time of trouble. He's your helper. He's your advocate. That means he's in your corner. He's your defender. And my personal favorite lately is the Patronus, okay? Anybody Harry Potter fan? I heard giggles. Uh, Anybody adamantly opposed to Harry Potter? Uh, we can talk later. That's fine. Uh, I'm not endorsing this entirely. D don't do witchcraft, all that kind of stuff. Here's what I'll say. So if, you, if you're completely lost as to what this is, why this is interesting, uh, the Patronus is this idea of, of a patron, one who is generously giving to you for your life and for your health, for your well-being. So J.K. Rowling wrote, wrote a bunch of books uh, with, in the Harry Potter series, and there's a charm that, that the most amazing wizards are able to do in the midst of great opposition, in the midst of great struggle and fear and terror, that they can do expecto patronum if they're really a great, uh, a great wizard, and that there will be this uh, weird ambient, typically an animal shows up and is present, and it's, your, it's the spell at work in your favor. So you can do this charm, you can do this spell, and what I will say is that is just a cheap knockoff of the beautiful gift of who God has given us in the Holy Spirit. Yes, he's beneficial to you. He's, he's working things out in you. He's, he's protecting you. He's your advocate. He's your help. He's the one who comes alongside you. But in Harry Potter, it's a force to be manipulated and only the expert wizards are able to do it. What Jesus says is, no, the Holy Spirit is the gift that I give to you because I love you. And, and the Holy Spirit is not an it, this crazy mystical thing that you get to tap into and manipulate. 
but he's actually a person that you can grieve the Holy Spirit. You can walk alongside and with the Holy Spirit. He actually fills you. So this is weird, right? Weird, strange, confusing, or you could use the word holy, like our God is. Wild and wonderful and everything that's good. So that's a little bit about who the Holy Spirit is, is, is that he is in your corner and in your favor, and Jesus is glad to go away. He's going to the cross to wash you clean of sin so that you can be filled with the person of the Holy Spirit. And he goes on and he, he says that, that the Holy Spirit is, is constantly working things out in our world. And, and there are two specific things in this passage that Jesus says the Holy Spirit is going to do. The Holy Spirit is going to do two specific things. So uh, if you're taking notes, you can write these down. The Holy Spirit guides you into what is true. That's what John 16, 13, Jesus says there. He says that he will guide you into all truth. Now, you got a, a friend that just, they're a straight shooter, somebody that loves you enough to tell you the hard things. Do you guys have a friend like that in your life? If you don't have a friend like that in your life, you need a friend like that in your life. Do you know why? Because we all do stupid things, Okay. If you felt like you were the only one in here that has done some stupid stuff, you are not alone. We all need that friend that they even, they see the look on your face and they know what's going on in your heart and in your head. And they say, they just give you one of those. Like, eyes wide, don't do it. Stupid. He says that he's going to guide you into what is true. So there are three factors here that Jesus gets into. He says that he's going to convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Sin, righteousness, and judgment. The Holy Spirit's going to get real honest with us. And here's what I need you to know. That when God's Word reveals something that is hard to hear, it is always for your good. You can trust Him. Okay? You guys ready for some hard stuff? Either way, you're sitting here. Okay, you haven't left yet. Uh, <laughs> Jesus says he's going to—the Holy Spirit's going to convict us of sin. That there are things that are broken in this world around us where there's addiction that we struggle with. There are things that we went hard after thinking that we were going to have life and that, that things were going to be joyful and good for us. It was going to go well for us, but we found out on our face that we were more annoyed, more desperate, more alone, and more broken than when we began. Jesus goes through and he says that, that the root of all that, the addiction, the immorality, the terrible decision, the selfishness, he goes through and he says, that's all at the root that you don't believe in me. If you look for, further on in the passage, he says, he says that um, about sin because they do not believe in me. This idea of belief or faith is all about a trust relationship. That Jesus has declared things about us, about our hearts, about who we are supposed to be. And it's for our good that we trust him, that we would believe what he has said. And it begins with, him saying that you are sinners and I came to seek and to save the lost, the sinners, the broken, the ones that are trying their very best to, to pull things together, but they finally admit, God, I'm a mess. I've got a wreck. Jesus, are you willing to rescue me? Are you willing to give me life? So Jesus says that the Holy Spirit is going to convict us, the world of sin, that there are things that just ain't right in the world. Can you guys agree with that? There are some things that are just pretty jacked up man, what's the solution here? What's the fix? I don't, have, I don't have the answer to this problem. This, this stuff that's broken in the world, the education system, politics, just the way people are with each other, just drive on the highway for a little bit, just like, what is going on? Just all the broken stuff. And he says that he's also going to convict us of righteousness. He's going to reveal what righteousness is because Jesus is going to go to the Father. He's going to reveal what righteousness is. So what happens is 
uh, that the Holy Spirit uh, reminds the disciples of all these things that Jesus said and Jesus did. And, and what we then have are the Gospels, okay? The Word of God reveals to us who Jesus is, that there's all this brokenness in the world. Just read through your Old Testament. You're going to be like, what the heck is wrong with— it's not just America. It's like humanity, okay? Across languages, places, and times, people are messed up. But then Jesus comes on the scene, and there is something that even the biggest skeptics, when you read, when you read about who Jesus is and how he interacts with people, where you're just saying, God, that is so right. What he's saying, how he's interacting with people, if, if all of the world was to love and to live and to lead like Jesus does, oh my word, could you imagine how good and beautiful that would be? Sign me up except that I would go in and mess it all up because I'm not like him. There's a righteousness that is, that is Christ alone, that what he did and how he is is what we are craving for. But here's the good news is that we are always called from the beginning of our Bible to look to God for our righteousness, that we would have faith in him, that we would depend on him, that I don't have a righteousness on my own. I don't have life on my own. You don't have life on your own but we actually find it when we look to the God of our salvation, our creator that loves us, cares about us, and does not leave us in our sin. That's what faith is all about. That I don't get to show up on a Sunday and be like, why can't y'all be more like Stephen Rickles? Let's sing some songs about Stephen Rickles and how good Stephen Rickles is. That is stupid. Walk away from that church, okay? We are opening our Bible and trying to get to Jesus as quickly as possible. The Holy Spirit's going to remind us and show us the righteousness that is in Christ, how good, beautiful, and life-giving He is. So there's righteousness that you and I don't possess on our own, but that Christ has purchased for us, that He gives freely to us. And then there's the third thing that the Holy Spirit's going to guide us into what's true, is that judgment. Judgment. This is hard stuff that God is not okay with brokenness. God is not okay with sin running rampant in your life, ruining you, your mind, your opportunities, and the people and things around you. God's not okay with it. Our culture is not okay with things like that either. They're like, man, that guy's messed up. Let's put him away. Cancel him, shut it all down, remove the idea of his existence. That's how our culture operates. Do you guys agree? So is that God's option? He is incredibly just, incredibly good, incredibly beautiful. What does he do with sinners? What does he do with people like you and me that there are broken things, broken motives, broken attitudes that I just let selfishness run rampant in me? What's he to do? Cancel us, crush us, throw us away. What Jesus says here is that there is one who has been judged. His ways have been proven and shown to be obsolete. That's what the death, burial, and resurrection shows, is that Jesus says that, that the, the, uh, the sin, the destruction, and all the things that are, are attributed to Satan's work in the world will be done away with. That's what judgment is all about. So J Jesus says that, uh, that judgment, because the ruler of this world has been judged, that there's another option for God than just to crush us along with all the brokenness and sin. This is really important. Because God is just, because God is holy, what's he to do? He can't just wink at our sin and say, oh, We'll let that one slide. Our sins have to be paid for. Our sins have to be paid for. So what you see back in, in Gen or not Genesis, in Exodus chapter 34, you find out about God's character. The people of God are learning about this one true God, the, the God of our Bible. And, and he reveals himself. He says, I am kind and compassionate. I am gracious, I am merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in faithful love. Oh, it just warms your heart, right? If you keep reading, he says, but I will not leave the, the uh, I will not leave, what's the word? The guilty unpunished. Those that are sinners, those that have chosen to do their own thing, the ones that are selfish, 
He says, I can't leave that unpunished. So how is God to operate? Well, Jesus steps in and takes our punishment. He went to the cross not because he's a sinner, but because you and I are sinners. Because God in his justice, sin has to be dealt with. And Jesus says, yes, come to me. And so that's what the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit ends up pointing us ultimately to Jesus because he is our helper, he's our friend, he's our advocate. He's not just telling you all these hard truths and saying, so good luck, hope it all goes well for you. He's always going to point you to Jesus. Jesus says that's what, that's what the Holy Spirit is going to do. He's not going to leave you in your sin. He's not going to leave you thinking about how good Jesus is and what a crappy person you are. And God's judgment's coming, by the way. Good luck. It's not who the Holy Spirit is. He's going to remind you that there is salvation. He's going to reveal to you that there is healing and forgiveness in Jesus Christ. He's going to glorify Jesus. That's what Jesus says, fi finally. He says he's going to be, he's going to glorify. He's going to take what is Jesus's and declare it to you. Jesus's righteousness, Jesus's love, Jesus's goodness. He's going to reveal it and show it up in your life, in your heart, to you and for the world around you. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He's going to say over and over, look at Jesus. Don't stop over here in your isolation, your anxiety, where you're saying, man, I'm a, such a screw up. I'm a sinner. I'm a mess. All these things are broken that I touch and I'm so unsatisfied. He doesn't leave you over here. He says, hey, what do you think about Jesus? You know, I heard that he came, I think he came to seek and to save the lost, and you look pretty lost. You look pretty confused. Have you looked to Jesus yet? You know, Jesus came to, to save sinners. You look like you got a lot of sin going on there. You know, Jesus opened the eyes of the blind. You look pretty, your vision looks pretty messed up and cloudy. You know, you, you look like you, you can't get up. You look like you need healing. You look like there, there are things that are not just physically broken in your life, but there are things that are broken in you. I heard that Jesus is a healer. Have you looked to him? That's who the Holy Spirit is. That's what he does, is that he's gonna point us to Jesus because here's what you find out about Jesus. We've, we've been in John chapter 16, and I'm just gonna tell you a few of the things that, that John reveals and shows about who Jesus is. And this is, by John, carried along by the Holy Spirit. He says this, that, that Jesus Christ is the Word made flesh that dwelt among us. He's the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He's the Messiah, the Christ, the long-awaited King of creation. He's the bridegroom who is coming again for his bride, the church. He's the living water that anyone who is thirsty and desperate would come to him and drink deeply and be satisfied. He's the Savior of the world for the Jew, the Samaritan, the African, the Stephen. He's the prophet that Moses only dreamed of. He's the one that will speak truthfully and lead you faithfully. He's the bread of life that you, if you are hungry, you would find fulfillment and satisfaction in him. He's the light of the world so that you would see clearly and have life in him. He's the door of salvation that you would be saved and that you would find rest and pasture for your life. He is the good shepherd that leads you through the valley of the shadow of death. He's the resurrection and the life that although we die, we will live. He's the true vine that all things are possible with him, that you'd have his life pulsing through everything that you do, that the world would be drastically changed. That's who Jesus is, and that's what we are called to. That's who we celebrate today, that he's our savior, he's our king, and the Holy Spirit is just gonna continue to point you over and over and over to who Jesus is and what he's done. And John ultimately ends up saying all this. He's like, I've been talking about Jesus. He says, I've said these things, I've written these things so that you would believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you would have life in his name. That's why Jesus came, that you'd have life. Not just life for the moment, but eternal life, that the things that are dear and precious to God, the things that are gonna last beyond judgment day, that those things would start taking root in your life here and now that the Holy Spirit would fill you and start producing things in you that you're like, wow, where'd that come from? 
Like, that's incredibly good. Like, that response is totally different than what I used to, to do. I used to be incredibly angry whenever that happened. But, gosh, that's something new. That God is working out something inside of you. That's made possible by the Holy Spirit. And so that's what we get to experience as Christians is that we would, we would look to Jesus and be changed by Jesus, that we would have life in his name, that we would call out to him. And that in Romans chapter 8, verse 11, he says this. He says, uh, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, then he who raised Christ from the dead will also bring your mortal bodies to life through his spirit who lives in you. That even though you and I will die one day, most likely, pretty sure, that your story doesn't end there. That's the hope of Easter. That's the hope of the resurrection is that the things that are unthinkable to you, God would do. The healing that you're like, man, I just don't know. That Jesus says, yes, with me, all things are possible. So man, if, if you're in there, in here, and you're just thinking, gosh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what my next move is. I don't know how to bring healing. There is just an a feeling of tension in my life, that's, that's an unsettled feeling of sin and brokenness. The Holy Spirit's convicting you, saying, this could be for you. Jesus is for you, not against you. Man, I just encourage you, uh, one of the first sermons after Jesus' resurrection uh, that was preached, it was preached by a guy named Peter. Peter is pretty much a screw-up. Uh, but Jesus grabbed a hold of his life. He, he said, Jesus, I'm a screw-up, but you're the Savior, and I'm all in with you. And God used him to proclaim first the first gospel. That there is life in Jesus' name, that Jesus went to the cross, died for the sins of humanity. And here's what the response is. These people have heard this, that, that they are sinners, they're convicted of their sin, and, and they're torn apart. They feel the weight of their decisions and their life, and they're just saying, what hope do I have? And they say, brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized each of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. He says, repent of your sins. Recognize that yes, God, I, I got all these things that are going on in me that I just, I don't know how to deal with. I can't figure out what my next move is. And repent is to turn away from you trying to do it on your own and turn to Jesus. And say, Jesus, I'm going to trust that you're my Savior. You came to seek and to save sinners, and Jesus, I'll throw my hand up and say, I'm a sinner. I need you. I need someone besides me to do something for me. And Jesus, that's what you came for. And if that's you today, um, I'll just encourage you. You're in good company. The people that are in this room that are singing the loudest, they have made that proclamation. They've said, I am. I have so much sin. There's a, in 1 Timothy chapter 1, uh, the apostle Paul, who's like this, this guy that seems to have it all together, but he's a mess just like you and I are. He says, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and I am the worst of them. I am the worst. And he saved me. There's hope for you. Jesus is good enough. Jesus is Savior. Turn to him and trust him. That's my encouragement to you. If that's you, um, we've got a new text in thing that we're trying out. If it fails, I'm sorry, but you can come and talk to me later about it. Uh, do we have that? Yeah, you can scan the QR code or you can text in to that number that's really long. You just text the phrase gospel. If you would like to know more about who Jesus is or salvation, if you've, or if, if for the first time you're saying, man, I'm, I'm all in. I'm tired of doing things on my own. Man, we would love to reach out with you with, with a gift and some resources just to help you navigate uh, this next little leg of life following Jesus. And so that would be our privilege if you would. Uh, that's going to be on the screen after the service as well, if you want to be a little bit more incognito and just do it afterwards. Um, or at the end of the service, you can go out these double doors and come and talk to me. I'd love to give you that resource today right now. Um, just to help you along the way following and knowing who Jesus is. That would be my privilege. Uh, and then there are some people in the room that... You don't know what to do with everything I just said. And I understand that was a lot. We want to be a church that helps you take a next step, whatever that step is. Uh, if you don't have a faith in Jesus, you have a faith in something. Do you realize that? 
you don't have the option. If you don't have a faith in Jesus Christ, the resurrected King, you have a faith in something. And we want to just help you figure out what you believe. Uh, if you don't know how to articulate it or you've got questions about faith, about God, we're starting up a new small group experience, just a conversation about honest questions that people have. Uh, and everybody's got them. Just know that you're not alone in your questions. Uh, but Pastor Barry's going to be starting that group up next Sunday at 11 o'clock. And so you can either come to the 930 next Sunday and then go to that group, or you can just skip my sermon and go to that group. Uh, I'm not offended. Uh, we just want to be a church that helps you figure out what you believe. And is it, is it real? Is it true? Is it good? Is it life-giving? So that would be our, our privilege. That starts next Sunday at 11 o'clock. And like I said, it's just a conversation about honest questions about faith, God, and life. And there's that. Lastly, I will say, if you're a Christian, if you're a Christian in here, what a day to celebrate our King. That He looks at you with love. He wants you to find life with Him forever. He wants to fill you with His Holy Spirit. And check this out, that is not just for you. That is that when you walk out these, these doors, and you go into your business, you go into your neighborhood, you go into your apartment complex, you go into your workplace, you go into your neighborhood, whatever it is that you're going to next, that God would be doing a work inside of you that feels a lot like heaven coming out of you. That you experience his love, his joy, his peace, his patience, his kindness, his goodness, his faithfulness, his gentleness, and his self-control in your life for you and it does not stay with you. It's exerted out into everything that you do, in your words, your attitudes, your looks, your actions. Man, that the kingdom of heaven would actually be sensed here because that's where you are walking. You realize that? God wants to fill you with his Holy Spirit so that his kingdom would come here and now. I'll close with this. There is an interaction between Jesus and Martha. Martha's mother had just died. And Jesus says, hey Martha, I'm the resurrection and the life. Do you realize that? Because she's sad, she's grieving. She says, Jesus, if only you had been here, he wouldn't have died. Jesus says, hey Martha, do you realize that I'm the, I'm the resurrection and the life, girl? If you believe in me, even if you die, you will live. He says, do you believe that? Christian, do you live like that? That Jesus is your savior, he's your king, and he's the hope of the world. They don't need another Holy Spirit convicting and poking and showing all their flaws and all their sins. They need a person that loves Jesus and is going to point them to their savior. That's what you and I are privileged to do, Christian. They don't need another Holy Spirit being like, here's all your flaws. It's you coming alongside your friend that is broken and sad and feels all alone and ashamed and they know that they're guilty and you say, hey, will you walk with me towards my Savior? I'll show you who he is. He's the one that is faithful. He's true. He's the one that met me in my darkest, ugliest, grossest moments and he is bringing healing. I don't know about you, but that's my story, and that's my King, and that's my Savior, and I'm glad that we got to praise Him together this morning. Let's pray together. Father, thanks so much for this morning. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you, God, for the gift of our salvation that's made possible by you, Jesus, that when you went away, you went to the cross to pay for the sins of humanity, that if anyone who is a sinner, that they would, they would get honest and say that we're a mess and we need a rescue, Jesus, you bring the rescue. You are our healer, you are our savior, you are the king. It is in your name only that the human heart finds healing. For my friends that are questioning a day, God, I pray that you'd meet them. I pray that you would give them boldness to trust you. I pray that you'd give them faith, that they would know your character and find out that you're even better than what they are hoping for. 
We praise you. We ask all that in your name, Jesus. Amen. Hey, guys, we're so thankful for you. We hope you enjoy the cookies and the punch that are out there. Grab a family photo. If you have questions about the talk or about faith, I'll be out these double doors and to the left. Love to say hi to you. Thanks so much for being with us this morning.